to the glory and praise of God is the house on the hill, on the mountaintop. It's prophetic for what God is doing and we give him all of the praise and all of the glory. Let me thank the Lord one more time. Yes. Yes. The Lord gave it to us because he knows that we can handle it. He knows we can handle it. That's why he gave it to us. And so he's just building and building and we're building up with him. And we give God all the praise and all the glory. Amen. Praise the Lord. What a joy it is to have Pastor Richard Miracle with us today. He's the pastor of Christ Alive here in Accra, Ghana. Let me thank the Lord for the beloved man of God. I saw him with the amazing bow tie. I'm like, I should have one bow tie tonight. I have to repent for not listening to the Holy Spirit. Amen. I just told him about the meeting yesterday and he's here today. I know how busy it is, especially for us preachers. We have a service tomorrow and we have to listen to the Lord and we have to pray. He's been here, shows love and we're so thankful, so honored. Amen. You're in the right place, man of God. We just thank God for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, before we go into the word, I want you to thank God for yourself. For being here tonight. Give the Lord a round of applause for you. You are a miracle. You are a miracle in motion. You are not a nobody. You are not an identity. You are not a statistic. You have been called by a divine God. Brought to a great place. Established in a great family. Put under great leaders. And if there's anyone we want all to thank God for, it is you. Let me rejoice for you this morning. This evening. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just say a word of prayer before we go into the word. Lord, help us. We thank you for being here. You are here. You are here. And where you are, anything can happen. We have come to hear you. Speak to us like only you can. Impact us in a way that is so powerful and so significant that our lives will never be the same again. Thank you for what you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Give the Lord a praise one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Joshua chapter 1, verse number 8. Popular scripture there. I'm sure almost all of us know it. Joshua chapter number 1, verse number 8. Thank you. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night. Somebody say day and night. Mm -hmm. That you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then, not before then, not during then, but after then, then thou shalt make your way prosperous and then Thou shall have good success. Can you say amen? amen? Psalms chapter number one. Psalms chapter number one. Verses one to three. I want to read to your hearing tonight. The first chapter of the book of Psalms. Verses one to three. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor stand in the way of sinners nor sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. We see it again, almost verbatim, in jo like, that, like he narrated in Joshua. We see delighting in the law of the Lord again. His delight is in the law of the Lord. And in that law, does he meditate when? Day and night. Now he describes to us that man. That man, in verse 3, that man shall be like a tree Planted by the rivers of water, 
bringing forth his fruit in his season, his leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever, somebody say whatsoever. Oh, say it again. Say whatsoever. Whatsoever he does shall prosper. Our theme is fulfilling kingdom purpose. And I want to talk to you this evening from the subject, the key of maturity. The key of Christian maturity. Child of God, it's important that you understand that God is a loving parent. And the mark, the distinguishing mark of every loving parent is the joy of watching their children grow from stage to stage. A parent is not heartbroken if a two-year-old wets his bed. But if he turns 20 and he's still wet in his bed, we have a problem. So it is with God. He's not expecting perfection from us overnight. No, no, no. But what God is interested in every single one of us is that we grow. We grow from stage to stage, from age to age, from glory to glory. In fact, it is the growing in life that gives the joy and the vibrancy to life. Negative emotions like depression and despair and hopelessness usually arise when we're stuck. But God has brought us to this seminar to fire us up and usher us into a new level of glory. Because he's the God that loves you, you see. He's the God that's interested in us. It's because of you that he has us have the meeting together. You are the reason for all of this. Because you matter to God. You are important and valuable in his agenda. I told you yesterday, it is a mistake for you to measure yourself by how you see yourself right now. Don't do that. Don't do that. The Bible says, the just must walk by faith. And so if you limit yourself by how you see yourself now or what is going on with your life now or how much money you have in your bank account or what position you take in the company, you have missed it. When Jesus was born, he was placed in the manger because there was no room for him in the inn. <laughs> because everything great does not start great. <laughs> Greatness is not always packaged in silk, child of God. So don't measure yourself by your past. And don't estimate your value by where you are right now. It is a mistake if the devil has more insight about your value than you. The enemy is fighting you because he's so afraid, so terrified with you coming into your own, you coming into a place of maturity, you coming to a place of growth and Christian character that God begins to use you like only God can. That's why he's fighting you. And you have to understand that. There are some things God, not that he does not want to commit to your hands, but he cannot afford to commit them to your hands now. 
because he's waiting for you to mature. Maturity is not how long you've been born again. Maturity is not how long you've been coming to church. Maturity has nothing to do with how old you are or how many gray hairs you have and how much hair you have. You still love me, brothers. The one constant thing about life is loss. Praise the Lord. Maturity is measured by the quality of your decisions. Hear Paul. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I talked as a child, I understood as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish stuff. We know you become a man when you put away childish stuff. When you put away child, uh, uh, when, you know, when you, we cannot rely on you, you are not faithful, you are not committed. Those are all childish stuff. And God is saying, if I'm going to take you to the next level and begin to use you like I plan to do and release unto you the blessing that I've here marked for you, you've got to put away childish stuff. I don't know if I have a popular scripture, but if I do, it has to be 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Let's look at it. 2 Corinthians Chapter number 3, verse 18. Thank you, Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter number 3, verse number 18. Hallelujah. Look at what it said. But we all, somebody say we all. Say it again, please. Say we all. Say it one more time. Say we all. That means that none of us is exempted from this. God will never cut corners for anybody. It costs what it costs and it does not go on sale. <laughs> Listen to me. The Bible says, the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. Somebody say steps. So, when you come into the kingdom, do not be like me and do what I do when I get to the airport. When I get to the airport, I hate taking steps. I'm looking for an elevator or an escalator. I don't want to climb no steps. In the kingdom of God, there are no elevators or escalators. Did you hear what I told you? The only thing that we have is steps. And you have to take it a step upon step and precept upon precept. A little here and a little there is going to take a step by step to get into the destiny that God has for you. No shortcut, no elevator, no escalator. The steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. I'm sure we have it here in Accra, but we have something in America, we have something in Houston where they have, they do sales. I love sales. That should tell you the part of Africa where I'm from. Where, where, where is that? They have them in Ghana. Kwahu, Kwahu. <laughs> I'm from Ijebo in Nigeria. And we and the Kwahu people in Accra, we are twins. <laughs> we don't like to spend money. We don't like to spend money. Praise the Lord. I'm going to tell you I don't like to spend money. <laughs> People say we are stingy. But we like to think we are prudent, chairman. We like to think that God can trust us with money because he knows we, we wouldn't be spending. But you know something that you would never find on sale? 
you will never find a Rolex watch on sale. You will never find a Rolls Royce on sale. You will never find an Amani suit on sale because there is a level of quality you get. If you're waiting for the price to come down, you're going to wait till Jesus comes. So I come to let you know that the glory that God wants to release on you, it is so precious, it is so priceless, it is so powerful, it will never go on sale. Oh. If you're waiting, you're going to wait forever. It costs what it costs and it does not go on sale. That's why anytime we see God use a man mightily, understand that he's paid a price. Don't be fooled by what you've seen. There's always a story behind the glory. The price has to be paid for you to get the price. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But we are with unveiled face. Somebody say unveiled. The veil has been taken away in Christ Jesus. The veil ripped from the top to the bottom. Hallelujah. So that we now can have an intermingle with God. We that could not stand the presence of God before Christ are now able to relate face to face with God. What a mighty thing. What a mighty thing. Now look at this with me. We all with unveiled face beholding us in a mirror. The glory of the Lord. Beholding us in a mirror. The glory of the Lord. We are with unveiled face. Beholding, to behold is different from to glance at. To behold means to look intently, intentionally, deliberately behold. The Bible says we behold the glory of the Lord. The Amplified tells us what the glory of the Lord is. The Amplified tells us is the word of God. Just like what we read, read in Joshua 1, 8 and Psalm 1. The book of the law shall not depart from our mouth, but we shall meditate day, therein day and night. Tells us that that glory of the Lord is that word of God that you have. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever seen one of those people that when they appear to you, don't mention any names, don't mention any names. When they appear to you and you look at how they look, you wonder, hmm. It's either one of two things. They either don't have a friend or don't have a mirror. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? You're nice. You're a Christian. So you cannot say anything. But you're wondering, how in the world could she have come out of the house like that? In fact, I suspect, ladies, that if we check your handbags, there's a mirror in there. The mirror is critical. Because we need a mirror to what? Fix ourselves. When you look in the mirror, child of God, who do you see? It's not a trick question. When you look in the mirror, who do you see? If you look in the mirror and you see Pastor Alice, you have a problem. When you look in the mirror, you see yourself. The Bible says that God's word is your mirror. So who you are is not what your bank account says. Who you are is not the position you are in the company. Who you are is not the way they treated you. Who you are is not what your first boyfriend called you. Who you are is not how your parents raised you. 
Who you are is who you see in the word of God. You are a champion. You are a winner. You are an overcomer. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Jesus was very rich. He became very poor that you through his poverty might be rich. You are not weak. You are not depressed. You are strong. You are mighty. You are the great army of the Lord. You are an overcomer. You you are the one that the world is waiting for. Give the Lord a round of applause, somebody. Never forget that. Never forget that. So, as often as you look in the mirror to fix yourself physically, you must look into this mirror to fix yourself spiritually. That's what gives you your identity. Don't you ever, ever settle for the identity man gives to you. Never. Because they don't know who you are. Only God knows who you are. You can never know who you are and you will continue to roam this world purposelessly. God has called us to a life of purpose. He has called us to purpose. But you will continue to roam purposelessly until you come to that God who made you and who really knows you. He is the one that could tell you, the only one that could tell you who you are. So he tells us that the word of God is a mirror. Mirror, let's read on. It's beholding us in a mirror. The glory of the Lord told us glory is the word of God. The Amplified tells us that. Tells us that. I've been transformed. <laughs> transformed. It's a powerful word. He said, he said, let me break it down a little. He said, as I behold the glory of the Lord in the word of God, as I behold it, which is my mirror, I am transformed. Let, let, let's, let's look at some things before I even get into that. I'll come back to that word transform. Transform into the same image. What image? The Amplified tells us again, into his image, the image of Jesus. Transformed into the same image from glory to glory. It is not an instantaneous thing, but it's a solo thing that goes from glory to glory, from level to level, from grace to grace, from step to step, from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of God. So when I behold the glory of the Lord, which is in the Word of God, which is my mirror, the Spirit of God makes me more like Jesus from glory to glory to glory. Child of God, are you excited? That's why I cannot limit myself to who I am right now. Jaden, little baby, he has all the muscle that his daddy has. But the only difference between him and his daddy is time, nourishment, and exercise. As he continues to feed and exercise, it's just a matter of time. Like my son, my son, I warned him. I said, the day you get taller than me, I'm kicking you out of my house. So you can get as tall, but don't get taller. So you know what he does now? Anytime we're about to take a family picture, he stays away from me. He doesn't want, because he doesn't want, he doesn't want me to know that he's taller. Whether you like it or not, they will get taller. Praise the Lord. The little boy that was born just yesterday. That's just the reality of life. So, I become more like Jesus. Being transformed. The word transformed is the Greek word metamorpho. It's where we get the biology word metamorphosis from. It literally means to evolve. Child of God, the doctrine of evolution is scriptural. 
the doctrine of Darwinism is evil and hellish and devilish. Come on, you have to be more intelligent than that. They told you you evolved from a monkey and there's nobody in between the monkey and a human being and you believe that. You can believe that if you want. I know I came from God. I know that. But the Spirit of God as I behold the word of God, transforms me, makes me more like Jesus. I evolve, metamorphosis. We are told in biology class that a butterfly does not start out as a butterfly. <clears throat> that a butterfly starts out as an egg. In fact, there was a time in the cycle of the butterfly, that the butterfly was a maggot. Did you know that? As lovely and as beautiful, has so much splendor, gracious. Many of us have a butterfly as a as a DP display picture. Nobody has a maggot in their display picture. But the reality is, you have to go through the maggot stage to get to the butterfly stage. And I guess I'm trying to tell somebody today that don't be fooled with where you are at in the cycle of life and your walk with God. Maybe you have a maggot of a marriage. Maybe you have a maggot of a business. Maybe you have a maggot of a child. Maybe you have, don't, don't, don't throw away the maggot because if you throw away that maggot, if you kill that maggot, you have killed your destiny. You have murdered your butterfly. If you just keep feeding and you just keep growing and you just keep growing one day the maggot will shed his maggot shell and the, oh, all of the wings and all of the tell somebody I'm about to break forth I'm about to break forth I know you think I'm a maggot but keep watching I know you feel I'm a maggot but keep looking I know I treated you like a maggot but keep looking at me because as I walk with God God is going to take me from glory to glory to glory to glory to my butterfly destiny somebody give God a round of applause glory to God glory to God 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 17 I got to show you this 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 17 oh my God oh my God are you learning anything out of this now watch this, watch this, watch this. For our light affliction. Somebody say light affliction. <clears throat> I have to stop and think about that for a minute. Because sometimes God says some things that don't make any sense. It does not make any earthly sense at all. Because Paul here, speaking about the Spirit of God. He's saying every trouble you've been with, you've been through, every turmoil you've encountered, every pain you've had, every negative news, every terrible despair, every feeling of hopelessness, every, every, every challenge in your physical body, every turmoil in your emotions. Paul said if you take a computer or a calculator and you add everything all up, he calls it what? Light. Can you imagine? Some of us have been through some tough situations for years. And God said, as far as I'm concerned, light. You see, because the words light and heavy are relative. Those words are used based on who you are talking to. When we got our first home, because we were, we were coming from New York. Our first apartment in New York. Our first apartment in New York. Eh, the whole apartment is the size of Pastor Alice's wardrobe now. You know I'm the only Kwahu in my house. She's no Kwahu at all. Praise the Lord. 
the whole one bedroom apartment, the whole thing. So we were excited. I think it was four bedrooms. But no, no, no. The, new, the Houston first house. Yeah, we were excited. Oh, you know, four bedroom house. Look at what the Lord has done. Uh, look what the Lord has You know, because we were, we were coming from one bedroom. Excited about this four bedroom. Until we went to uh, a nephrologist friend's house. He invited us to his house. We went to, that's why, child, you can't afford, you cannot afford to be a worshiper of things. You cannot, did you hear what I said? Because all things do is give you a short-lived happiness. Short-lived. Oh, you have iPhone 10. iPhone 11 is about to come out. So you can't, you can't, you can't, oh, God gave you a, a big house, four bedroom house. <laughs> we went to this guy's house. His house reached from one block to the next block. Uh -uh. I said, and this same God is his God. <laughs> Something is wrong with you if you think that anything is too much for you to wear, to live in, or to drive. Something is wrong with you because they did not make them for people with two heads and 20 hands. They made them for human beings. You are, listen, 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 listen. I got to tell you this. I got to tell you this. Do you know you're a child of God? I told you I'm Kwehu. God is not Kwehu, you know. Kwahu, Kwahu. God is not Kwahu. When God wanted to buy you, well, if you go to the market and you want to make a transaction, you want to buy something, and they tell you it's 10 CDs. You will be a fool to give them 20 CDs for something they told you is 10 CDs. If they tell me it's 10 CDs, I'll ask them, can I pay five? I'm Kwahu. But you are, you are nice, non Kwahu people. You give them 10. I bless God for you. But if you give them 20 CDs for something they told you is 10, you're a fool. Now, how many here know that God, our God, is not a fool? Because when he was going to buy you, the word redeem is not a spiritual term. It's a financial term. It means to purchase, to buy. So when the Bible says God redeemed you, he's literally saying God bought you back. And when God was going to buy you, if he could use the blood of a goat, he will have used it. If he could use the blood of a dog, he will have used it. If he could use the, the, the blood of a turtle dove, he will have used it. But he had to use the blood of his son because that's what you're worth. You're worth the blood of Jesus. Never let life or people or the devil talk down your value. You belong to God. You are valuable in his eyes and you're worth the blood of Oh, God. Hallelujah. 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 So he said this light affliction. All of your troubles are light. Be seated for a minute. And no matter how long they've gone out, look at what he says. It's causing a moment. The reason why he's saying that is because He's looking at what he's going to bring you into. All our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us. Tell somebody is working. <laughs> I told you, I told you yesterday, if you want to bake a cake, you have to get flour, you have to get sugar. You have to get salt, sugar sweet, salt is sour, but you have to get baking soda, which is nasty tasting. Have you ever tasted baking soda? Who will ever think that a cake has baking soda in it? But a cake can never turn out to be as great tasting if you don't put baking soda in it. God 
is trying to let you know he's making a cake out of you. And yes, there will be sugar for the time that you come to Fountain Gate and hear the word and hear great music and hear great preaching and hear great ministry. But there will always be a baking soda. It's not just about only the sugar, no. So you put everything and you walk it. You walk it. Tell somebody, God is walking it. He's using all of your experiences. The sugar of your life, the salt of your life, and the baking soda of your life. God is walking it. He's walking it. He's walking for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. God said, I have something greater. I have something better. I have something more glorious. I have something more wonderful that I have for your life. So don't reduce yourself to your baking soda stage. Don't reduce yourself to your maggot stage because God has a glorious day destined it for you and he's walking it for your glory oh thank you thank you thank you Lord thank you Lord so so I said I said uh, uh, I'm getting too big and I'm went on the scale and I didn't like what the scale was showing I said let's get let's get to the gym so we got to the gym when, with those people that call it workout, that thing is really workout. For those of you that don't know it's workout, you haven't been to the gym. It's really, it's really workout. And so when you get to the gym, the gym is a very interesting place. You know, it reminds me of the church. The gym is how people are physically, just like the church is how people are spiritually. Do you know that? When you get to the gym, you will see people that are 400 pounds. That's, 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 that's 250 kilograms. They are in the gym. They are running. They are running. They are sweating. And you're looking. 250 kilograms. Because you are just, uh, you are just 100 kilograms. And you're trying to drop to 80 kilograms. And there you are seeing this 250 kilogram lady walking out. And you're saying to yourself, if you're doing all this walk and you're 250 kilograms, I don't want it. Are you like me? Sometimes I don't like some thoughts, but they just come. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> but what you don't understand. You don't understand, when she started, she was 300 kilograms. Because you're measuring her by how she is right now. And you're getting discouraged because you refuse to consider her past. And you fail to measure her future because if she goes on, she will not stop at 250 kilograms. You came to Fountain Gate. And somebody did not greet you like they should. And somebody did not hug you like they should. And you are angry. Oh, if that's how they do it, church, I don't want any of that. You're a fool. You don't understand that we are not perfect people. We just have a perfect God. And we are all in different stages of development. And you don't even know where I'm coming from. I'm not perfect yet, but trust me, I'm better. So don't measure me by how I am. Oh God, if you keep watching me, I know I'm 250 kilograms now, but I'm walking out. I'm walking out. Tell somebody, keep watching, keep watching, keep watching. And stop acting like a hypocrite because you are no better than any of us. You are no perfect yourself. If somebody did not hug you like they should, you hug somebody like they should. If somebody did not greet you like a should, you greet them like a should. If somebody did not love you, who said we have to do it first to you? Love is an action. Jesus already died for you and is calling you to love other people. Watch this. So I'm in the gym. Just as I saw the 250 kilogram lady that almost got me depressed. I saw the guy with the biceps and pops, everything bulging, bulging, everything just. That one intimidated me. Walking like the big lady, 250 milligrams, 250 kilograms. 
One, I would love to be like. The other, I want no part of. We're all in the gym. Now, the guy, the Mr. Musulman, he just goes to the weight and he goes. <sighs> so I said, this thing looks easy. Let me go try it. So I, went, I cannot even leave that thing up. <laughs> I, did, I need a caterpillar to leave this thing up. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's life. But if I refuse to give up, I refuse to give up. It's that thing that he's lifting, lifting, lifting is 120 kilograms. If I refuse to give up, and I'm smart, I will go to the 20 kilograms. And I will. I will come back tomorrow. 20 easy. Oh, let me go to 25. Now I wonder if I dare go to that 110 tomorrow, I will tear my muscle. I have to know my level. And, but as I keep on, I move on. As I keep on, I move on. As I keep on, I move on. If all that I can carry is 50, and God gives me 150, I will be crushed by the weight of the 150. Oh, let me explain to you. He says, walking forth a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Because glory has weight. Uh, how many want the glory of God? See, when we sing those songs, we want your glory. Your glory, Lord. We want the glory. I'm always looking at the saints. I'm wondering, do they really understand what they're talking about? Because of the glory of God is not a, it's not a light, finicky, paperweight thing. No! The glory of God can kill you if you're not ready for it. It has weight. The weight of glory. So God is saying, what you're asking me for, you are not developed to get it yet. If I give you 150 kilograms and all you can handle is 50 kilograms, you would die under the weight of it. Can I tell you something? It is not everybody that is driving a Mercedes that is happy. It is not everybody that lives in a mansion that is, I'm telling you, I'm like, listen, secularly a doctor, I have, I have dined with the richest and the brightest of men. Many of them will give up everything they have for what you have. Everything they have. To have a night full of peace and joy in their soul because you don't appreciate what you have. That's why you're wanting to be like them. But you are being a fool because you have something of eternal value and you have something of... Oh. Never be envious of any sinner. Never, never. I beg you in Jesus' name. I don't care how his bank account is or how everybody calls him Oga, Ogasa, Oga, Ogasa. Don't be fooled by any of that nonsense. At the end of the day, he's just a sinner that needs God like every one of us did. So, because God is a loving God, he cannot give you the glory with how you are right now. He has to let you develop. Develop. My sister, it is not everybody that is married that is happy. It is not everybody that has a child that is happy with that child. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? So don't look down or feel down for yourself because God hasn't given to you yet. All you need to do is to keep growing. Tell somebody, keep growing, keep growing. 
keep going. You have, God has brought you to Fountain Gate as your gym. And our chairman is our coach to help us and to help us and to grow us and develop us. Because many things you're praying for, the solution is not prayer. The solution is growth because you want it and God has it. And God wants to give you much more than you want it. But God knows you cannot handle it. So God is waiting for you to keep growing. Tell your neighbor, keep growing. Keep growing. Keep lifting the weight. Because you're going to go from 50 to 60 to 80 to 120. And when you can handle 150, God will release the weight of glory over your life. Somebody give God a praise. Oh, let me share this with you. I will close. Please, please, bear with me, Musha. I have to share this with you. I will close. We will close. God has designed for every substance to be nourished with the substance of its kind. Did you hear what I said? The way God designed things. That every substance is nourished with the substance of its kind. If you want to nourish your body, your body came from the ground. That's what the Bible tells us. And your body will return. To the ground. That's where, it came. That's where it came from. So for your body to be nourished, your body can only be nourished by stuff that came from the ground. You all know that animals came from the ground. You know that. That's what the Bible says in the book of Genesis. God spoke to the earth and the earth brought forth. And that's how the animals came from. So the plants and animals that are needed to sustain your body came from the ground because you came from the ground. You cannot nourish your body unless you consume stuff that came from the ground. Are you with me? Now, you know that your spirit, the real you, didn't come from the ground. You know that. See, I'm always confused when I... When I say Christian people, they go, to, they go to grandma's grave. And they're there crying. Grandma went home to be with the Lord five years ago. They're there at the grave, crying and crying. And they, 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 they decorated grandma's grave at death much more than they decorated grandma's house when she was alive. She's not there. That's her earthly clothing. Grandma is with Jesus. This body is her earthly clothing. Now, don't, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying we shouldn't give people decent funerals. We should give them decent funerals. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying that's not you going to grandpa's grave. It's not there. That's just his earthly clothing. Yes, you can remember, and yes, you can put flower, and I'm not belittling any of that, but I'm just trying to let you know that as you do that, know that he's not there. Are you hearing what, what I'm saying? Because Genesis chapter 2 verse 6, when he formed your body from the dust of the ground, he put his breath into the body he's formed from the ground, and man became a living soul. So the real me came from God. That's why the real me has to return to God. I stop existing the day God stops, stops existing. That's how I am an extension of the life of God. What makes me alive is the very essence of God. He put his breath into the body he formed from the ground, <clears throat> man became a living soul. Don't confuse my body with me. I'm wearing clothes on clothes. My body is my earthly clothing. 
and I'm wearing these clothes on clothes. The real me is my, that's why racist, people who judge by how tall, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, he has to be, he has to be, what, what do they say, uh, uh, tall, dark, and handsome, and he has, he has to have six pack, and six, 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 six pack, six figure, what's the other six, and six feet. Six, six is the number of the devil. Sister, you're a fool if that's what you're looking for in a man. Because one day six pack is going to go. And you're going to understand that treating you well involves much more than just being six feet. Oh, you don't want to hear me. You don't want to hear me. Let me tell you something. No matter how much you dress a corpse, is going to stink after a while. And if you're looking for a man that's dead. You better look for a Jesus lover. You better look for a man that's going somewhere. You better look for a man that's on fire for God. You better look for a man that's on destiny. If Pastor Alice looked for 666, you'll have missed out. Because... Thank God for her that she, 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 she didn't look for six. Because she would have missed out big time. Because when she met me, I didn't have anything. <laughs> for your spirit man to be nourished... Your spirit man has to be nourished because it came from the inside of God. We established that. It has to be nourished with the substance of God. The Bible tells us John chapter 1, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God. And the word was God. In other words, it tells us in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, this God is sharper than, it's, 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 it's alive. Sharper than two edges sword. The, 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 the living Bible says it's a living thing. Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Your Bible is alive. And when you behold it, it infuses life into your spirit. That is how you grow, child of God. No wonder Joshua said, you must meditate it day and night. No wonder David said, you must meditate it day and night. Because they understood that as you meditate in the word of God, Sam Conscious chapter 3 verse 18, you become more like Jesus. You grow from glory to glory. And as you grow, God releases more glory to you. Sam Corinthians chapter 4 verse 17, he releases more weight to you because now you can handle it. You become more like God. You become more like God. And that is how you fulfill your kingdom purpose. You will fulfill your kingdom purpose. You will fulfill your kingdom purpose. So both Joshua and David tell us that I must meditate. meditate. We, have to, we have to talk about the word meditate. Many believers, I'm sure not in Accra, but there in America where we are. Because any, any principle that's powerful, the devil always seeks to pervert it. Do you know that? All of the great, great music, they didn't get their gift from the devil. They got it from God. But the devil always seeks to provide it. There's no such thing as ungodly music. There's ungodly lyrics. The artistry is from God. That's why we have to take it back and use it to glorify the rightful owner. Whatever it is, whether it's reggae or hip hop or whatever it is, it is God that gave it. We have to take it back and use it to glorify God. You might not like it, God does. Because God created it and God loves variety. So don't be mad if we're singing a song you don't like. You just be patient. Somebody likes it. After a while, we're going to sing the one that you like. Praise the Lord.
meditate. From the Greek word, meleta, it means to mutter, it means to ponder, meditate. I have to know what meditation is because both David and Joshua told me that it is by meditating in God's word that I make my way prosperous and I have good success. Both of them said the same thing, that prosperity has nothing to do with my race, has nothing to do with my color, has nothing to do with my nationality, has nothing to do with my upbringing, has nothing to do with my vocation as a citizen of the kingdom, has nothing to do with my position, has nothing to do with my learning, has nothing to do with my degrees, but has everything to do with my meditation. Child of God, child of God, everything to do, oh God. Luke chapter 5. Did I say this yesterday? I'm going to say it again. Luke chapter 5. Peter is an expert fisherman. He and Andrew, his brother, they grew up in fishing business. They are not like you and I. They don't fish for a hobby. No. They fish because if they don't do it well, they will die. That's their livelihood. So they understood fish and where to catch fish and where to go and the depth they should go, how the net should be, the temperature and the kind of fish is here. And, they, and with all of that expertise, all of that skill, all of that experience, they walked all night and caught nothing. That's what walk without grace does to a man. That's what education without favor leaves a man. All night, with all of their skill and all of their experience, is a picture of many of us. Many of us have been there. Life is not working. You're doing all you know to do, but things are not working. You cannot pay the rent. And the husband is acting crazy. And the children are acting funny. And the business is acting haywire all night. And the enemy is speaking to you. He's telling you, move to New York. Life will be better in New York. Come to New York and I will show you beggars on the streets of New York. I will show you vagrants on the streets of New York. I will show you homeless people. Because your blessing is not from abroad. Your blessing is from above. So. Jesus came calling. Somebody here, Jesus has come calling tonight. Jesus came calling. It's in your Bible, Luke chapter 5, from verse 1. You can see it. He asks for their boat. Their boat is their ladder. That's like asking me, Pastor Richard, for my stethoscope. That's all I have. As a physician, ask him for his boat. Because when you come to Jesus, he will ask you for the precious. Why? Because he already gave you the precious. He gave you his life. He has the right to ask you for the precious. He asked him for his boat. That boat may look like nothing to you. It is everything to Peter. Everything to Peter. That's his life. Everything. Somebody in here, God is asking you for your salary. Because he's telling you, we're going to complete this great facility. So the souls, they're already coming, but they will come in larger proportion.
And you're saying, that's all I got, Lord. That you, you, you are where Peter was. That's all I got, my boat. That's all I got, my stethoscope. That's all I got. Jesus said, I want it. I need it for ministry. I need it for a purpose that is bigger than you. Because if you keep it, you will spend it on something and there's nothing you will spend it on that can be as valuable as building God's house and delivering souls for the kingdom. Peter obeyed. I pray you obey. Because the story never finishes, never finishes at the point of seed sowing. <laughs> as long as the earth remaineth, seed, time, and harvest shall not cease. So Jesus takes the boat, all that he has. Uses it for ministry. Gives him back the boat. Because there's nothing you give to God that God will not give you back. Did you hear what I just said? Anytime you can write this down. You can write this down. And if it does not happen, I want you to call me in Houston. And I want you to, I want you to. I want you to rain any abuse that you know on me. Anytime God asks you for anything, it is always because God has something better to give to you. Every time God asks you for anything, your talent, your time, your treasure, every time God asks you for anything, it's because he has something better to give to you. He uses the boat, uses it for ministry, and gives it back to him. Now watch this. He said, now Peter, I want you to go back to the same place where you walked all night and saw no result. I want you to go back there. That means your problem is not location. It's not located. Jesus didn't say, oh, you were, you were trying to fish in the wrong river. Go to that one that's two miles down the road. That's where all the fishes are. No, no. Go back there. Your problem is not location. Watch this. Tells him to go back and do the same thing. That means your problem is not vocation. It's not about what you do. I don't care if you're a carpenter or a tailor or whatever. What you need is the favor of God. Because Peter was walking without a seed. When he releases the seed, the seed will always connect you to grace. He connected with grace. Goes back to the same place goes back to doing the same job and now has a net breaking harvest. God is going to give you a net breaking harvest. God is going to give you a net breaking harvest. That's why you cannot quit. You cannot quit because you went through all night and you caught nothing. It's the grace and favor of God. So Joshua and David, they tell me that my prosperity is at the mercy of my meditation in the word of God day and night to meditate Greek word meleta, it means to mutter and ponder. 
It means to think about it and talk about it. That's why he said, it shall not depart out of your mouth. The word of God, not your problem. The word of God, not your pain. The word of God, not your circumstance. The word of God, not your situation. The word of God, stop talking about your problem and start talking about his power. His power is greater than your problem. As you behold it and see who you are, start meditating on it. Start speaking it. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I am an overcomer. I will come over this too. God is with me. By this I know that God is with me, shall not let my enemies triumph over me. So I know that this will not sink me, because God is the greater one. He's resident on the inside of me. Start talking like a champion! Start talking the word of God, because that's the champion that you are. So the Bible tells us as we meditate, we're feeding Feeding on God's substance, the word of God. Feeding on God's substance. And as that happens, transformation occurs. Metamorphosis, 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18. Transformation occurs. And I'm changed, I'm evolved from who I am, from Ayo to, it's not overnight. It's not instantaneous. It's not magic. No, 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 no. It's subtle from glory to glory, becoming more like Jesus from grace to grace, from step to step, from wisdom to wisdom, from splendor to splendor, from anointing to anointing. I'm growing, becoming more like Jesus. And as that happens, he releases more glory. He releases more glory. And now I become like Paul said, I was a child. I spoke as a child. I talked as a child. I understood as a child. Now I become a man. I put away childish stuff. I can function like a man in the kingdom. I can now fulfill my kingdom purpose. I can now take my place and take my seat and do what God has called me to do because I've matured and become a man in the kingdom of God. Do you receive it? Stand on your feet with me. Stand on your feet, meet me. I want you to begin to talk to the Lord. Begin to talk to the Lord. Begin to talk to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's the word he wants me to share with you today. He said, tell my people that. They said they are waiting on me. But tell them that I'm waiting on them. I'm waiting on them to meditate. I'm waiting on them to grow. I'm waiting on them to mature. I'm waiting on them to develop. I'm waiting on them to be faithful. I'm waiting on them to serve. I'm waiting on them to get involved. To get involved with ministry. To get involved with service. Get involved with love. I'm waiting on them to start loving the unlovable. I'm waiting on them to start bearing with the unbearable. I am waiting on them. They said they are waiting on me. But I am waiting on them. I'm waiting on them. Begin to talk to the Lord. Begin to talk to the Lord. Begin to talk to the Lord. Oswald Chambers, the great man of God, Oswald Chambers, he said the greatest benefit of prayer is not what prayer does for us. When we pray, prayer does some mighty things for us. But he said that's not the greatest benefit of prayer. He said the greatest benefit of prayer is what prayer does in us. Because when we start praying, prayer changes us. It changes us. That's what Jude said. Jude said, building up myself on my whole most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit to charge, to build up like a battery. That's what Kenneth Hagin said. He said, when I pray in the Spirit, I'm charging myself. I'm charging my spirit, man. Begin to pray. If you can pray in the Spirit, begin to pray in the Spirit. I want you to begin to prophesy over your life. 
take over your destiny. You are the greatest prophet of your own destiny. You are the greatest prophet of your own future. You are the greatest prophet of your own ministry. Open up your mouth, child of God. Open up your mouth and begin to pray. Begin to pray and begin to declare.